We come in expectation, Lord God, expecting to receive a word from you straight from the throne, Lord. I pray that Pastor decrease and you can increase through him, Lord God, that you speak straight through him, Lord God, that we rebuke any demonic attack, any confusion, any, any distraction, any hindrance, anything that will try to steal the seed from going forth and bearing fruit in our lives. Lord God, we just pray for a, a, a heart to, to receive, Lord God. Give us ears to hear what thus says the Lord. Open our eyes, Lord God. Allow us to see past the veil, Lord God. I just ask that you just bring us deeper, Lord God. Give us revelation, Lord God. Unlock the scriptures, Lord God. Just take us to another level of glory, Lord God, and give a, a deeper understanding and revelation of your word, Lord God, and be sensitive to your voice, to know your voice, Lord God, as you speak through the man of God that you have entrusted to deliver your word, Lord God. We just thank you. We worship you. We honor you, and we praise you. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray, and everybody scream. Amen. Amen. Let you. You. Come on, y'all. Y'all greet somebody. Tell them it's good to see them on a Wednesday. Say it's, it's good to see your sanctified self on church on a Wednesday. Come on, these are the riders right here. Amen. We're gonna start. We 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 gonna play this video right quick as we begin. All right, yeah, I just, I just want to say, man, um, I appreciate the ministry today, um, what you did on stage. I was, I mean, I was moved, I was touched. I'm, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist, so that means I was in church this Saturday morning. And uh, as I was passing by, I said, let me stop by. Um, God just made me do that. And as I was listening. So if you see that you will, I know you will. I know, I know. I was listening to your message. I saw what you did. I saw that lady convert. Because today is the day of salvation, declares the Lord. But I just want you to know I had tears in my eyes too, man, because I'm sitting in church wondering, you know, what is, is there more to this? And I've been in church all my life. And uh, I think bringing the message this way is so much more powerful. Yes, we need church, but most people don't go to church. Most people are out here. This is where life happens, and this is where the music, this is where the message needs to be. I think you talked about God's spirit being in the in the earth. Well, it's not just in the church building, man. I felt the spirit so much today <laughs> as you were speaking and, and bringing your music. And, and I want to visit your church one day because I wish all the members from my church could visit your church. But I hope this thing continues, not just on this street corner, man, but on every yeah. street corner because... It's, to me, it's uniting. I have a great job. I've never been where some of these rappers that I hear talking about their lives, jail, streets, drugs, prostitution, all that stuff. I've never been there. I grew up in a nice home, two-home family and everything. Man, but, but, but I feel this. I need what... I need what these people need, you know? Um, and so I just want to thank you. Man. I just want to thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's the spirit of God that brings freedom. Amen. We sow, we water, we heat gets the increase. And today he already ordained, preordained in time that you will receive an increase. Because today is the day of salvation. The day of salvation. Amen. Well, I said we got to evangelize the church, y'all. Because the church is outside, amen, the ecclesia, it's the called out, amen. That's what Jesus said, to build my church. That was a marketplace. That was a secular structure, amen. So on this word that he's given me after the Sabbath, amen, how many know a lot of people argue about all kinds of things supposed to be in the body of Christ? But there should be no divisions amongst us. And we start holding on to things and the doctrines of man. And, you know, it's not about so some people, and you, just in your walk, You'll start getting pharisaical on yourself. Remember, like, that religious spirit is also a spirit of pride. So as you give your life to Christ and, you you know, you, you, you converted and you got delivered, amen, and it's a new walk. But the enemy is so cunning, he dresses up as if he's an angel of light. Don't think the devil leaves you alone when you get converted, right? He turns up. He just tries to come different type of ways, amen. So now, and I know this because I was feeling like this on myself. 
I was judging myself beginning in my walk and wanting to just, it was just, it was all about works. I wanted, I wanted to work out my salvation, and you can't. You're saved by faith through grace, amen? And then he says, that, you know, he'll see your faith by your works, but there's a difference when you think you're working for your salvation, amen? When you think you got to do this and you got to do that and you got to do this, and then you start falling into ritualism and you start holding on to things that you were never supposed to hold on to. Now you're trying to take the law, amen? When Jesus didn't come to abolish the law, Jesus didn't come to break the law, Jesus came to fulfill the law. But now you're trying to be more holier than Jesus. Ooh, hold on, hold on. He's like, you don't want a day, amen. So he's saying after the Sabbath, amen. So, so how many know after the Sabbath, what, what day is that? It's not a trick question. What, what is it? Sunday, right? So, you know, and, and a lot of people are getting to, you know, it's a new, it's a, it's a new conversion. And, you know, they, they, they just want so much to live the word of God, which is beautiful. But that's why we have to rightly to divide the word of truth. Amen? We got. That's why you got to read the whole Bible. Because you, if you take the scriptures out, you take it out of context when you don't read the whole word of God. Amen? I, I use the analogy all the time when you take my life. At one moment in my life, I was going to Houston to do the wrong thing. Another point in my life, which is now, I go to Houston to preach, and I'm back to preach on Sunday. But if you take one part of my life, and then you put it against another part of my life, and you don't look at the whole story of my life, it looks like a big contradiction. Oh, he went to Houston to score some bricks, and he came back, and he was preaching the gospel Sunday. But you missed decades of my life. You missed the pruning season. You missed deliverance. You missed restoration. You missed having an encounter with the living God that changed the trajectory of my entire life along with my kids also. So we can't take things out of context. We got to read it in context. Amen. Praise God. And uh, I, I, God just has me going right here real quick. I don't know who was here Sunday. I know we haven't gotten a chance to upload Sunday's word, but the word was we cannot be phased. The enemy wants to phase you. And phases are implemented to promote change, right? So the enemy wants to phase you with every little thing in your life to get you off of the rock. Slowly and gradually, he's trying to get you off of the rock. If he could get you off of the rock and he could get you from under the shelter of the Most High, then you have no defense and the enemy's going to come and devour you. So you got to look. When life happens, because life is going to happen, many things are going to happen because it's going to try to phase you. It's trying to knock you off that rock. And you got you to gotta hold fast to your confession of your faith. I will not be phased. Oh, I'm not where I want to be right now, but I will not be phased. My bank account don't look like I want it to look right now, but I will not be phased. Yes, I feel sick, but I will not be phased. Yes, I got persecution, but I will not be phased. Yes, she's coming against me, but I will not be phased. Yeah, I feel like everybody hates me on my job, but I will not be phased. Amen? Come on, we building on the rock. We are sons and daughters of the Most High King. So who, who, who could be against you if he's for you? Amen? Come on, say, I cannot be phased. Amen, amen, praise God. So after the Sabbath, we know Sunday. And, there, you know, there, there's so much theology and so much things that are out there. They, they're talking about the Christian Sabbath is the Sunday now. No, that, that's not biblical. We got to stick to the Bible as it's written line upon line and precept upon precept. Because when you do history and they had the Council of Nicaea and the Roman Catholics adapted Christianity and they try to change the Sabbath, can't nobody change nothing, amen? When God speaks, God speaks and that's what it is, amen? But we got to know the whole Bible so we know where we're going with that. Because some of y'all are like, well, then why we worship on Sunday? Well, we're going to get into all that, amen? Praise God. Buckle, bu bu buckle your safety belt. Amen. Mark, let, let, let's start right here at Mark chapter 2, uh, verses 23 to 28. Now it happened that he went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. On the Sabbath. And as they went, his disciples began to pluck the heads of grain. And the Pharisees said to him, look, why do they do what is not lawful, lawful on the Sabbath? But he said to them, have you never read what David did when he was in need and hungry? He and those with him, how he went into the house of God in the days of Abathar and high, the high priest and ate the showbread. 
which is not lawful to eat except for the priest, and also gave some to those who were with him. And he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. Amen. See, the Sabbath wasn't made as a burden unto man. Amen. It was a gift unto man. How many know God gives every perfect gift? All good things come from God and are by God. Amen. And are for God. Amen. So if this was a gift God gave us, it should never be a burden because it was a gift and God is perfect. He's excellent. Amen. And, and this is Jesus. This is, this, this is Jesus speaking right now. See, some people, you got, you got to watch because they get too far on one side or too far on the other side. Balance is right in the middle. Amen. It's the completed work, amen? Because if you go to the Old Testament, you want to just hold on to the Old Testament, that's what the Muslims do. That's what the Hebrew Israelites do, amen? And they're real disciplined. Can, can, can we say some of them are more disciplined than some professed Christians? Can we be real in the house of God, amen? But guess what? All of those works means nothing because there's only one way, and that's Jesus Christ. So don't hold on to all of these works and then miss the way, amen? And, all, and then that's why he says walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling because it's not to push your convictions on another. Here you had this guy, he was a seven-day Adventist. Who am I to tell him, oh, the Sabbath is this and, you know, you can worship on, or who is he to tell me? No, you should be worshiping on this day and that day. Doctrines of man divides. We stick to the infallible doctrine, which is the infallible word of God. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. Say, it's the whole Bible. It's the whole Bible. So Jesus said right here, he said, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. Amen. Jesus healed on the Sabbath. Jesus did all kinds. And when you went into back into the law and the Mosaic law and the Mosaic law, and then you go into the commandments, really, they wasn't supposed to do nothing on the Sabbath, not even pick up sticks. And he said, is it, is it lawful for me to heal on the Sabbath? If you had a donkey that fell in the ditch, would you not get that donkey out? They said they wasn't even supposed to cook on the Sabbath, so they had to prepare the food the day before. And right now, man is grabbed back to work, and they don't want to eat, and they don't even want to put on the electricity because that's going to make the people at energy have to work, and it goes on and on and on, and where are the boundaries? That's why we got to read the whole word of God, amen. Remember, Jesus didn't come to break the law. He came to fulfill it, amen. The Sabbath is about rest, amen. Come on, on the seventh day, he rested. Some of us, some, some of y'all need to rest. You can't be so busy. And you look, I, I, I was preaching to myself because sometimes I do bah, 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 so many things and then have to come home and do so many things, amen. And God began to convict me on that. And he said, look, you need a rest. God rested. Don't you think you're greater than God? Come on, say, we all need rest. Come on, tap your neighbor, say, we all need rest. Just not in the house of God, amen. <laughs> amen is the time for everything. Now, you see, one day y'all know why I do the tap thing so much. Colossians 2, 11 to 23, some of y'all know right now. In him you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. By putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Amen. Bury with him in baptism in which you also were raised with him through faith. In the working of God who raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven all you all trespasses. Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us and was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Praise God. Come on, somebody. That's something to shout about. So let no one, say no one, so let no one judge you in food 
or in drink. I know, I know, I know brothers that I that I really love. Amen. That now they can't eat crawfish. Man, I'm praying for them, man. You heard me, like you, you, crawfish, like stuffed crawfish, shrimp, nut, man. But they falling back under the law. Now they want to have lunch and appear more holier than now. And then they got to wear this and then they got to do that. Amen. And that's the worst of the flesh. Amen. We're saved by grace through faith. Amen. Yeah, you got to be disciplined. But the Bible I read says you can have a form of godliness, yet still deny the power. And you yet still denying the power. Yet you have somebody that could be so religious, but they really a heathen at heart. They can look good in church, but then they pass so much judgment out there, amen? So all of that is, is to nothing. It's to no avail, amen? Because he wants your heart. We could dress up the outside. It, it, it's the heart. I know when I was an addict, they, they used to say I was a dressed up trash can. I, I was fresh, but I was dirty, rotten, dying inside, amen? So it doesn't matter. That's why God said man looks on the outward appearance. Christ looks at what's inside of the heart, Amen? So let no one judge you in food or in drink or regarding a festival or a new moon or, guess what this is? No more. All right, scholars. Or Sabbath, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance is of Christ. A shadow of things to come, but the substance is Christ. Amen. Let no one judge you on a Sabbath day. And really, I could, I could just kill this, I could kill this whole word right there. Because when people come against you with that, and the reason it's so, it's so important that we teach everything, because people are going to come, and you want to be versed in what you're talking about and what you believe in, amen? It says the word of God is for the equipping of the saints to carry on the work of the ministry, amen? So when they do come out at you, you need to go back to Colossians 2, 11 to 23, especially in this season that we in and in Christmas. And people are going to say, well, we should, be cert cert uh, we should be celebrating the festivals and the tabernacles and the new moons and all. And that, that comes from paganism and all of that. But the word says to the pure, all things are pure. Really, you, you, you just have to have the heart, your posture heart right. And if it's, it's about Christ, make sure it's about Christ. It's not about presence, it's about the presence of the living God, amen? And it's how it's about representing Jesus Christ. That's why we do toy drives. When we do toy drives, we make sure them kids know who gave them them presents, and it ain't no Santa Claus. We say, who gave y'all them presents? They say, Jesus. We say, what's his name, what's his name? They say, Jesus. So guess what? When they go home that night and the Christmas came through that they weren't expecting to get because most of the time it's in impoverished neighborhoods and it's kids that probably not going to get a Christmas, amen. And then we show up with the gifts and we let them know it wasn't no Santa Claus. It was Jesus Christ, amen. And that's a seed. And those kids are not going to forget that. And then they'll go back to that school and say, no, ain't Santa Claus ain't come, but Jesus did. Oh, yeah, who, who does Jesus is? He don't look like Santa Claus. <laughs> Amen. So let no one judge you in food or drink or regarding to festivals or a new moon or Sabbaths, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance is of Christ. It's a shadow. How many know where there's a shadow, there's a light? How many know you could get lost in the shadow and miss the light? He said it's a shadow to come, but the substance is Christ. It's not about doing these, these festivals and about holding these days and having a form of godliness and then you miss Christ. Then you could do all of these works, amen, but you could still crucify Jesus. Come on, who killed Jesus? It was the Pharisees and the Sadducees. It was the religious folks that killed Jesus, amen. We, we don't want to be like that, amen. Come on, we, we, we got to be followers of the living God, amen? Hallelujah, Christianity, like, you know, some people use that term so loosely, amen? We got to really keep it about Christ, amen? Let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. And not holding fast to the head, from whom all the body, nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments, grows with the increase that is from God. 
Therefore, if you die with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourselves to regulations? Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concern things which perish with the using according to the commandments and doctrines of men. These things indeed have an appearance of wisdom in self-imposed religion, false humility, and neglect of the body, but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. He said, don't hold on to all it is, but you're not feeding your spirit and holding tight to Christ himself. Because you could get so caught up in the necessities of it. I go to church every Sunday. I put my tithes in the bucket. I even serve. You could get caught up in it. And I'm not saying nothing's wrong with all of that, amen. But I'm saying you better have more than all of that. Because that's a form of godliness. He wants your heart. He wants your heart. Above all else, guard your heart with all diligence. Because through it flows the issues of life. This gospel is really supernatural. But to whom much is given, much more is required. He wants your heart. The whole Bible is about your heart. It's about the love you have for your brothers. The love you have for your brothers reveals the love you have for your father. How can you love the father which you haven't seen, but you hate your brother that you can see? Come on. We could drill. We, 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 really, the whole gospel is found in that. Fall in love with the father, and your whole life changes in the process. Then when you don't have, you ain't even tripping about what you don't have. Because you know one thing, man, my God got me. So guess what? He got me right where he wants me. And I don't want to go ahead of him, and I don't want to fall behind him. Amen? He knows exactly what I need when I need it. Amen? And you want more? Give him more. To whom much is given? Oh, okay, y'all got that. Well, let's give him much. Amen? We got to give him more than just this tradition. We got to give them more than just coming to church on Sunday and, and Wednesday. Now, y'all the super holy righteous ones. Come on, we in here on a way. Look, pat yourself on the back. Come on, you can do that. Pat yourself on the back. Come on, you at church on a Wednesday and it was cold out there. You could have stayed in the heat, you know what I'm saying? You could have stayed in the in the comfortability. Is that a word? Comfort you could have stayed comfortably. He said, yeah, just go with it, Pastor. You can just stay in the comfortability. Well, we make up words here. You can stay in the comfortability of your home, amen. You could have just watched it on the live and you could go get you your ice cream. But no, you said, I'm coming to the house of God on a Wednesday and it's cold because I'm hungry for a word from God, amen. And that hunger, he's faithful to fill up, amen. Then when we come out of here, we fill. Then we can pour out. And then we get refilled, Amen. But we don't wait the church to get filled. This is just this this is just land yap, amen. This is this, this is just a little bonus, amen. Which all concern these things which perish with the using, according to the commandments and doctrines of men. These things indeed have an appearance of wisdom in self-imposed religion, false humility, and neglect of the body, but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. Self-imposed, appearance of wisdom, false humility. Wow. False humility. We don't want that. No, we got to be real with God, amen. He's real with us. We got to be real in the house of God, amen. It's not the streets. We don't have to pretend here, amen. We don't have to act tough. We don't have to act like we got it all together, amen. This is a place, this is a safe place where we could be ourselves and we could bring all of our burdens to the altar, amen. And we could confess our sins one to another, amen. Because the fervent effectual prayers of the righteous availeth much, amen. One to another. And I, I'm not telling you tell everybody all your business. But I'm telling you, you should have somebody that you could confide in, that you could trust in, amen, that's not going to put your business everywhere, but it's really going to pray for you, really going to travail with you, really going to go to war on your behalf, amen. Praise God. Romans 14, 5. One person esteems one day above another. Another esteems every day alike. Let each be fully convinced in his own mind. What you say? One, one, one person 
or take the Sabbath and, and just make this all holy. I worship on the Sabbath. I worship on the Monday, the Tudor, the Wednesday, the Thursday, the Friday, the Sabbath, the Domingo, the Sunday. That, that's actually my middle name, Ander Domingo Pejerano. It is. I think it makes sense to me now because I never really, Sunday, why y'all gave me that? But anyway, we worship every day. We consecrate every day as holy unto the Father. But see, in the Old Testament, you know, he put that day. Remember the Sabbath, and he took that day, amen. But now we have the New Testament, right? We got Christ in us, which is the hope of glory, amen, that we have to give reverence to every day. That's why he said they, they, they hold to the shadows, amen. Don't let nobody hold you to a Sabbath. They get stuck in the shadow, and they miss the body. Christ, hold fast to Christ. Christ crucified. What Paul said, the simplicity of the gospel. Christ crucified. Everything's wrapped up in that. He loved, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever will believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. When you look at Calvary, man, God broke my heart showing me Calvary. A three-day fast, first time I've ever fasted in my life. I'm not going to get into that whole story. But when I did get into it, I talked about the pecan pie, and I ended up getting two pecan pies like the next day, praise God. I said, next time I'm going to talk about ribeyes, amen. But uh, that was in my call to mind. Yeah, amen. So look, so anyway, man, when I fasted that day, a lot was going on, a lot of persecution, a lot of everything was going on. And my first time ever fasting, I thought I was going to die. I never went without eating on purpose. You know what I'm saying? Then I did it for three days, just drinking water. When you when you when you get that hungry, you can't even go to sleep. You're just rolling all over. You think you're dying. You're drinking water. You're drinking so much water. The water don't even taste like no more. And it, I'm just being real with y'all. This was my first time ever fasting. Like I was going through it. I thought I was in the desert. And, and so I'm praying, and then now I'm praying, and so now I'm on the ground. Now I'm praying, and I'm praying, and I'm, I'm speaking in tongues, and then I just start crying. I start crying, and then I started visualizing pieces of Calvary. I saw, I started seeing like, like it was like on Calvary. I didn't, I could, I can't just explain. Like I knew where I was at, but I was watching it from the outside, and I seen the Lamb of God with the blood squirting out. And when I seen that, I seen myself in my sin. Doing things that I used to be proud about, that I used to brag about. And then I would see another part of him, and it was breaking me down. I was so sorry. I was, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You would have thought my whole family got murdered the way I was screaming, I'm sorry. Then I would see something else I did. Then I would see blood squirting out, and I scream, I'm sorry. And blood, and, and all. My, my nose, book is coming out of my nose. I'm screaming. I'm crying. I'm hyperventilating. I'm just screaming how sorry I am. And it was like he was showing me myself. I, I used to consider myself loyal, and he showed me how I'd never been loyal because Jesus Christ died for my sins, and I was living for the world. I was living for the devil, but he gave me life. I felt so fake. I, I was so vulnerable at that time, and I was just crying out to the Father, and it was, it was like, it was a it was a landmark. It was it was it was it was bigger for my walk. It's something that I could always pull from. I could always look back and think about that moment and I go right there and it just makes me appreciate him that much. And that's why we said the simplicity of the gospel Christ crucified, because if you could just grab that, your whole life will truly change. Amen. Hallelujah. The simplicity of the gospel. One person esteems one day above another, and another esteems every day alike. Let each be fully convinced in his own mind. You don't just grab one day. I grab every day and give it unto the Father. I remember every day as holy, and I give it unto the Father. Amen. I rest in the Father. Amen. So Exodus 28, it says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Matthew 5, 19, whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Am I trying to do away with the Sabbath? No. But remember, Jesus didn't come to break the law. He came to fulfill the law. Right? So, and, and when we went to the scripture above, it, it told us, so let no one... 
Paul, let, so let no one judge you in food or drink and regarding a festival, a new moon, a Sabbath, which are a shadow of the things to come, but the substance is of Christ. Amen? So the Sabbath was meant for rest, right? Right? So Matthew eleven twenty eight. what does it say? Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus didn't break it. He fulfilled it. So you're looking unto the day. I am that day. Remember me as holy, and I will give you rest. Amen? Men break the rest. When men break the rest, we have the Garden of Eden and men falling and away from its original design. When he first gave us the commandment to be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and take dominion. Amen. So when Jesus came, he did not only bring our deliverance and our restoration, he brought us back to our rightful place of dominion, power, and authority. And that's what we have in Christ Jesus. We can really drink poison and not be hurt. Amen. We can really lay hands on the sick and they will really get healed. Amen. When I tell you my little boys really got healed and they was really doing bad. Amen. But my God is realer than any Corona or RSV or whatever they call it. Or uh, He is oxygen. Amen. We all prayed in agreement. I give a word about I cannot be phased and the enemy trying to phase me. Then he tried to phase my, all right, he, he didn't have enough with me, so then he attacks my boys. So then they can't sleep, so I'm holding them all night while I, I got to get some sleep because I got to be in the pulpit Sunday. So then the enemy wants to attack me like, oh, you can't leave your boys like that. You don't want to leave your boys and go in there. Oh, anybody can preach, you know. Oh, this is your family. And all. God, whatever I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. That's why I got my wife, which is my helpmate. Baby, you going to hold it down, I'm going to handle business. She said, you do what you got to do, baby. I'm going to hold it down. You go handle business, amen. Because when I handle his business, he handles my business, amen. We got together. We prayed. We went over there. Brought him to the doctor. They get the x-rays. Everything came out good. They gave him the COVID test. Guess what? It came back negative. You hear me? Come on. A good report. Come on, Steven. Tell him again, brother. Come on. What you said? Suit up and show up. You hear me? Bro, I love Steve. I love you, bro. For real, bro. Suit up and show up. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So let's talk about after the Sabbath. Because they're like, man, why? We need. Y'all should see my inbox. And just people like, people always try to tell me how to run the church. And I don't tell me how to run the church. <laughs> like, he runs the church. I don't pick people. He picks everybody. Amen. I didn't shoot marbles with nobody that we in leadership with. He picked them. Amen. So he was like, yeah, oh, Pastor, you, you really need to pray because we're not supposed to be worshiping on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, for real. We're supposed to be worshiping on Saturday. And other people come with sincere questions, and that's why I do things like this to cut the devil's head off, amen? Because you should be able to come to your pastor and anybody else with any question, amen? And they should be able to bring you to the word. Like, don't, look, don't, I, I never want to give people, well, I believe Come on, nobody come to hear what I believe. <laughs> People, come, they want to know what the word says, amen. I know because I know we got a we got a unique we we, we got a unique church, amen. Y'all just like me. I didn't come to church to hear what you think. I come to church, I want to know what the Bible says because it's too much of what I think. It's too much of it's too much of it. Coming to Christ, and I'm seeing this one talking about this one, and that one talking about that, and it was like, hold up. And God said, look, just just, just come to me, and I'm going to teach you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to give you raw. You seek me with all your heart, and I'm going to honor that, and I'm going to give you raw revelation. Because he said in a dispensation in time, the mystery is going to be revealed through the babes. Amen. Hallelujah. That's how I look at commentaries, and, and, and I was like, wow, man. That was kind of awful. I was like, Father, am I off? And then I, and then no, I, I got he'll, he'll show me, and then I'll go do the research, and then I'll confirm it with the Word of God because the Word will always confirm itself. Whenever God gives you something and it's raw, just go in and do your research and make sure it's confirmed through the Word, so you know it's coming from the Father because the enemy is a tricky. 
He's tricky. He's cunning. Come on, a third of heaven fell, and it was in the presence. So we can't take light of that coward devil, amen? But that's why we study to show ourselves approved, a workman rightly dividing the word of truth, amen? The word of God is the truth, amen? Trying to set y'all up with with uh, with trivia questions after the Sabbath. So why do we worship on Sunday? Because we can, and we really worship every day. But I'm gonna show you in the New Testament where they clearly worship on Sunday. Amen. How many know what's the first day of the week? All right, it's not a trick question. It's gonna be a real one. First Corinthians 16, 1 to 2. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given orders to the churches of Galatia, so you must do also on the first day of the week. Let each one of you lay something aside, storing up as he may prosper, that there be no collections when I come. First day of the week, Sunday. Acts 20, 7 to 12. Now on the first day of the week, what day that is? Now, on the first day of the week, which is when the disciples came together to break bread, amen, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. Who's ready for that? Come on, we got, I got one brother with me. I got two with me. I got three with me. I got four with me. I got six, seven. I'm not judging nobody. They didn't raise their hand. Amen. <laughs> I know we got work and we got things to do, amen. But we let the, we need to go back to that church. We need to go back to that church where we don't schedule things when we know we have church. Because what if the Holy Spirit just wants to move all night, amen, and just restore all night and just burn things up all night? But then we have a we have an agenda, we have a schedule that we got to stick fast to so that we can't even fully get in the presence and worship because in the back of our heads we got to do this and we got to do that. Now, I know life, you know, life is busy and there's a lot of things going on and a lot of things that need to be done. But we need to just really just get, get, get a day and just give it unto the Lord. Amen. We need to remember the Sabbath. We need to give a day and put it aside and just don't schedule nothing. Just book this day for nothing. This day, put it on your schedule. I'm going to do nothing but stay in the presence of God. Put on my praise and worship. Read the word of God. Tell God how good he is. Amen. Bring my petitions to the Father. Go in my prayer list and just go over every little thing. Detailed. Amen. Because there's a reason he says there's power, death, and life in the tongue. Amen. There's a reason he says to confess with your mouth. Amen. Come on. We're going to move in power. Because it's so easy to fall off with a prayer life. I did it. Me just getting out the program, having a zeal, but not according to knowledge. And I'm going out and I'm going to Texas and I'm doing the Christian rap and I'm preaching the gospel and I'm reading my word. But I wasn't praying every day like I should. I wake up and tell God how good he is, but then I hit the ground running. I, I wasn't designating the time out where I was just on my face petitioning the Father. And I remember he, he, he cut me. He's like, man, hold up. You talk about me more than you talk to me. What's up with that? And he cut when he when he when he gave me that he cut me, it cut me and I and I said no I got some serious aside I pray all day I pray while I'm driving I pray when I get up I pray while I'm going through I I, I pray I pray all over I pray without ceasing Amen but you still have to have that time where you're not driving you're not moving around you're not walking and you're just right here. Not distracted by nothing right there. And just getting in his presence because in his presence, he'll give you instructions. He'll give you instructions, amen. See those desires you have? You think in your natural mind you got to do this to do this and obtain that? And God said, you just need to slow down and get in my presence and I will give you instructions. And he's going to take you there. He's going to bring you there, amen. Hallelujah. Now on the first day of the week when the, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. There were many lamps in the upper room where they were gathered together. And in a window sat a certain young man named, we're just going to call him E, you heard me? <laughs> who was sinking into a deep sleep. He was overcame by sleep. And as Paul continued speaking, he fell down from the third story and was taken up dead. 
For Paul went down, fell on him, and embracing him said, Do not trouble yourselves, for his life is in him. Now when he had come up, had broken bread and eaten, and talked a long while, even till daybreak, he departed. And they brought the young man in alive, and they were not a little uncomfortable. They were not a little comfortable. He preached till midnight. Dude was falling asleep under the word of God. And he died. He fell out the window and he died. And God was just telling me, man, some people, you come into the house of God and you're sleeping on his word. I'm not even talking about a, a natural sleep right now. You know, I know people tired or whatever, but I'm talking about the word is going forward. You right there in the presence like you know God's real, and you right there, but you're falling asleep on his word. You're not applying his word to your life. You're taking pieces of his word when he wants you to move and walk in power, amen, and you will die. It says, Lord, Lord, and he said, didn't I cast out demons? He said, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. These are people that thought they were saved. Paul said, examine yourselves unto the word of God to see if you're in the faith. Examine yourselves. That means some people think they saved and they really not. Christians represent the majority in this world. But the Bible I read says few are going to make it. It's a narrow path. So if few are going to make it and majority profess to be Christians, that means there's a lot of people that's going to be in for a rude awakening. So my job as a pastor to make sure it ain't none of us. Amen? It don't make no sense to play church. Because if we do, we're just wasting our time. Because there's no fruit in it. It's just like the Muslim making three salats a day and washing the left chin and the right chin and, and have a pink carpet and all of this. And that carpet ain't going to fly on the heaven. They doing all of that and there's a real hell. That's why I minister to them every chance I get. Every chance I get, because I was once deceived by that religion when I was in prison. And, and the power of God fell upon me, and I told God I would never play with him again. Amen? We don't want that. We want, we, want to, we want to receive everything that's ours on earth as it is in heaven. Come on, he said, if you decree a thing, it shall be established. Amen? What we loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Praise God. He fell asleep, and he died. But see, the good thing is that he fell inside, he didn't fall out. By him falling inside, he was still under the covering. So as he was still under the covering, Paul was able to keep preaching, and he was able to lay over him, breathe life right back into him, keep preaching, never missing a beat, amen. And that young man got up, and he did not die, and it encouraged the whole body, amen. So maybe you're falling out, maybe you're falling asleep. Well, I'm just telling you, make sure you stay under the covering, amen, so you can come back up, amen, so you can live and not die, so that death is not going to be a second death where there's fire and there's dark in this gnashing of teeth. If you fall out, make sure you fall in. Amen? And don't make a habit of it. I don't think that dude did that again. I think he was, I think he was engaged next time he was in there. Amen? Come on. It's time for the church to be the church and really receive everything that God has for us right now in this season. Amen? We don't have to wait for it. Amen? He said right now on earth as it is in heaven. Praise God. John 20, chapter 1. Now the first day of the week. Oh, it's another first day of the week. Mary met. What, what's the first day of the week? Y'all going to be ready when they come at y'all with their foolishness. Yeah, well, guess what? On the first day of the week, on Sunday, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. We go down. We go down to verse 19. Then the same day. At evening being the first day of the week. What day that is? Oh, come on. All right, come on. When the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. First day, Jesus saw preaching to them, Peace be unto you. They was, they was hiding, and Jesus popped right up through their closed doors, through their seclusion. It doesn't matter what you close yourself away from. 
Jesus is going to walk through them doors that you're trying to build up, amen, because he wants to tell you peace be unto you. He is peace, amen. He is the perfect peace that surpasses all understanding, amen. It said they seen his scars, amen. They seen his scars and they knew it was him. I don't know who I'm talking to, but stop hiding your scars. The world needs to see your scars because it lets them know how real Jesus is. When I was over there at Needle Park, and they had those, they, they had those spears, they were shooting heroin in their necks and shooting around. I, was, I, I had to take my thing off, and I showed them the little track mark that in the cross near my arm that I used to shoot directly into the cross. But when I was showing them my scars, I was able to show them how real Jesus is because then it became tangible. Then they know I'm not just saying that I used to be bound. No, I used to be just like you, amen. But the spirit of God came upon me and cleaned me up and now there's a fire inside of me and he takes me from glory to glory, transforming me in his image and he's no respecter of person. What he does for one, he'll do for another. What he did for me, he wants to do for you. That's my scars. I don't know what your scars is. You know what your scars is. And it's time for you to be transparent about your scars. Stop trying to clean up like you've never been dirty. When he healed with the man of the palsy, he said, look, get up and take your rug with you. So the people can know what I healed you from, amen. Because it gives Father glory, amen. And if he be glorified, the devil's horrified. Come on, we live to horrify that coward devil. When he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Now Thomas called the twin. One of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, we have seen the Lord. So he said to them, unless I see in his hands, this is how he was saying it in my head, the print of the nails and put my finger in the print of the nails and put my hands into his side, I will not believe it. Y'all trip. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas with them, Jesus came and after the eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, but, man, Jesus is so smooth. <laughs> he just, how many know Jesus will just pull up on you, amen? Yeah, stop that. Yeah, he'll just pull up on you. Don't say that. He'll just pull up on you, amen? Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, reach your finger here. And look at my hands, and reach your hands here, and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. You don't have to see it. He's there. You don't have to see it. He's with you. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of that which is not seen. Maybe you've been asking for the same thing. Maybe you've been praying for the same thing and you haven't seen it yet. That doesn't mean he's not there. That means you got to keep praying. You know, I pray every day for my sons to be here. And when I get in there, I ask them to take another x-ray, and I ask them to do another ultrasound, and they look at me like, 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 like I'm just, like I have no sense. Uh, sir, I don't think you understand. This, this, this disease doesn't go away. Oh, ma'am, I don't think you understand. My God will make it go away, and he told me my son will be healed, amen. And I speak it with boldness every time, and then they look, and then the, and then the, and the sis, they're still there. Do I stop believing? I don't need to see it. I know what my God said, and I know who my God is. So I hold steadfast to the word that he gave me. I will not be shaken. I will not be swayed. I will not be phased. I will honor him every day I live. Amen. And it's no longer for a healing. I'm going to serve him regardless. Amen. But I know what my God said. You need to know what your God said. You need to know who your God is. Amen. And you need to line yourself up with the infallible will of the Father, and he's faithful to take you from glory to glory to glory to glory to glory till you finally get to meet him. And he says, well done, my good and faithful servant. He wants your heart, amen. 
Now, if you want, we, 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 we do a rededication right now, amen. I want to pray a, an increase of faith right now, amen. And I just want to bind up confusion, amen, and just speak a divine expectation. That's what I want to pray over you right now. And if you feel like you need that, I want you to come forward right now. already know we start everything with a confession of faith because nothing good is done apart from Christ. Amen. Does anybody else want to come forward? We believe in these prayers. Amen. Two touch and agree. He said he'll grant us anything. Y'all repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died, crucified, and you rose again on the third day through the power of of the Holy Spirit, coward devil, coward devil, get under my feet. You have no authority. I have authority through the blood of Jesus Christ. Today, I repent for all my sins. My life is no longer my own. Lead me and I will follow. Send me and I will go. I welcome you into my mind, into my heart, into my life. Have your way. In Jesus' name, we pray and let the church scream, amen. Father, I thank you for everybody here. Father, I thank you for their hearts. Father, I pray a boldness upon them like never before. I pray a certainty upon them like never before. I pray that you increase their faith right now today, that they will leave out of here on another level with a certainty about them, Lord, that they know that they know, Father. I come against all things that are not of you. May they not be swayed by any discourse that does not honor you. Father, I thank you for this moment in time that is pregnant with possibility. Father, I speak desires inside of your children, Lord, and I pray for the provision to pull it out. I lift them all up to you. I thank you for them. I lift them up to you along with their cares and their burdens. I pray that they cannot be confused by the coward devil. I pray for an increase of wisdom, of knowledge, of understanding. I pray that you impregnate them with a desire to read your word like never before. But when they read your word, you give them raw revelation and understanding, Father, and give them the grace to promote application in their life that will change their situation towards elevation. Father, I speak another level over your children. We thank you. We give you honor and we give you glory. We rebuke the devourer. I pray that every seed went forward today and it fell on fertile soil and it will produce great fruit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And let the church scream. Amen. Praise God.